newspaper is the entertainment page. Entertainment page, people look at the entertainment page. If you've got a product to the broad consumer, you want to put it in the entertainment page. Now, the days of the week are very important if you're running in a newspaper. Which is the best day of the week? On average, the best day of the week I found, what would you guess? And the best day of the week is Tuesday. Second best day, Thursday. Third best, Sunday, on average. Monday's terrible because people have just started the week. They don't read much. The, they don't read the ads. They've started their week. They're unhappy in their job. They don't read much. So Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday are good at days to test. If you're running a business type product, the business page is good. They're an entrepreneurial or business because entrepreneurs and executives read the business page. Okay. The reason classified ads work only for a limited number of offers is they're and less related to their area of interest, your prospects are not looking in the classified section. For instance, your prospects for your computer super duper software program, they're not looking in the classified ads, are they, for your type of product? That's not what they're into. They're into, they're reading magazines that are directed toward people that are interested in computer software, things like that. They're interested in magazines targeted to them, lists that are targeted to them. So you don't want to run ads where people that are interested in your product are never going to look. Does it, unless you have a real estate apartment for sale or rent or house for sale or rent, then you, then you, uh, that would be a good place for you. But generally, so I've noticed over the years, more people probably have lost more money in classified advertising than any other form of advertising because it sounds so easy. You're on a small ad, put it in a classified section. But if you multiply it by 700 classified papers like they have in the US, you can easily spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, and you get no results or very few results. Because it's, but it sounds like a fortune, a way to make a fortune. And by the way, if you're running any ad, test it once, test it twice. Don't run in a series of newspapers, a series of, don't forget it. The advertising salespeople We'll try to convince you that's the way you do it. You get the best price. Don't worry about the best price. Worry about initially getting some response. Then you can roll out and get a better price. Okay, this was the ad I showed you before, how I started my business. That's a two-step ad, free information to follow. Okay, now we're going to get into the juicy part of direct marketing, the real workhorse, workhorse I call it, of any direct marketer's sales arsenal are sales letters. Real workhorse. This is what's gonna make you money. But all that I've covered about ads, if you can write effective ads, you can write effective direct mail. Because frankly, you can get away with murder in direct mail because you have a longer format. See, in space ads, the reason a lot of people have trouble is it's gotta be tightly written. It's gotta be very tight. Whereas in a sales letter, you can have a little bit, I don't like sales letters unless they're tightly written, but you can have a little, more, a little more room for messing around in a sales letter. I write my sales letters just like I do the ads. Tight, every word counting, every single word. I cross out unnecessary words. I want it long enough to tell the whole story, but short enough that it's not boring, but I'll show you how to evaluate that. For best results, Here's what's traditionally included in a sales letter. One, a letter. This is, uh, this is outbound, this is uh, Andrew Reynolds, one of the most successful marketers in the last 20 years in the UK. He does all of his marketing via sales letters. Just like you got. You got a sales letter, didn't you? You got a letter. And what you get is a letter, the outer envelope, and the order form. That's included. The next three are optional. Business reply envelope, we call them BREs, lift letter, brochure. The last three are optional. Most of my uh, mail that I do for clients and for my own have the first four. But very often we'll go to five and six. 
You got all that. Okay. You want to know what a lift letter is? Well, I'm going to explain that, but I'll cover it now, and then, and then I'll record it in your notes later. A lift letter comes from the phrase, it's a letter written by someone other than or under the signature, over the signature of someone under, other than the original sender of the letter. It could be an expert in your field. It could be a customer. It could be a doctor in, in, with a product that, in the health field. It could, so it's someone other than you. If you're the signer of the original letter, someone other than the main signer of the letter. That's the lift letter. And the per reason you have it is to lift respond. You want to have something in that letter that's not in the main letter. For example, another reason you might want to get Dr. Nicholas's water system, I mean, I'm just using a hypothetical example, is this that I didn't cover in the main letter. In other words, it's another reason why the water system that I've described in the main letter is by a third party endorsing, in effect endorsing it, and having another benefit. You see what I mean? And on the back of this lift letter, you have the following magic words. Please do not read unless you have not decided to order. And of course, everybody will read it. They'll read it anyway, whether they decided to order or not decided to order, because they're curious. Wouldn't you? So you read it from the expert, and it just solidifies, perhaps, the reasons you're interested in the product. OK. And by the way, I hope Andrew doesn't mind this. You want to have on every piece of information you ever give out, mail, send, include in a package, your contact information on your materials that people can buy from you. Stuart Goldsmith and I were looking at that wonderful offer that Andrew made to all of you to buy the tapes for practically nothing of this whole uh, shooting match here. It's incredible. I mean, what is, so we're looking at it, and both Stuart and I say, there's no contact information. There's no telephone number. There's no order form address. I don't know whether Sandra, uh, who, I don't know whether uh, anybody has picked that up yet. But I'm sure the, the, the comment would be, or Andrew's, the comment would be, well, but it's for the people at the seminar, so they'll turn it in, so we don't need that. But some of the people will take that home. That yellow sheet you have there, there's no contact information. You'd be surprised how often I find this with client info. They can't believe it. They've got copywriters. They've got graphics people. They've got checkers. They've got editors. They've got proofreaders. I come in and I see, why do, because I, it's kind of a natural thing I look for, because I see it so often. You got me? Never send out anything. Never give anybody anything because some people, maybe somebody got sick yesterday. Got, they got a cold or had a cold, went home with an upset stomach. They took it home with them. You want to make it easy. If the person wants the tapes, when they get home, they can order the tape, right? You don't want to make, where's the number? Where's the address? Make it easy for people to order because that's a customer service you, you must have. So make sure it's on all of your material. Okay, now, you remember I told you about the failed book, How to Fight Cancer and Win. And here is the headline. And what you're looking at is the outer envelope, the outer envelope, front and back. Front and back. Where did Andrew go? Is he hiding. He's having lunch. <laughs> he's a terrific person, but I, he, I know he's busy with it. But anyway, oh, here, maybe this will work. Ah, here we go. Maybe I wasn't pressing hard enough. Uh, here's the headline. You can prevent and cure cancer with two natural foods. See the quotation marks? World-renowned doctor says, seven-time Nobel Prize, three free reports. Is it three or five? Three free reports. See inside for details. Envelope front. That's the front, the top. And the, bottom, the back is the back of the envelope. Now, most direct marketers, do they use the back? What do you think? No. no. And I have found over the years, a lot of people, the mail lands on the person's desk and it lands face side down. The secretary puts it there, face side down. The back is valuable real estate. 
I want the back to have a lot of benefits. So what are these benefits on the back? They're from my 3x5 card. Remember the 3x5 cards? They're from the 3x5 cards, and we call them bullet points because those 3x5 cards have helped me create the bullet points. Now look as we go through the letter. That's the back of the letter. That's the back of the letter. The flap, seven-time Nobel Award-nominated doctor, shows how certain natural foods and nutrients actually prevent and cure cancer. Leading medical doctors endorse her breakthrough findings because I'm looking for credibility. It's a bold statement, isn't it? Two foods eat. Two foods you can prevent and cure cancer.